Oh, Brooke, <laughs> good to finally meet you in person. And uh, I know a lot of people were also like, uh, I think the, the only thing is like a lot of Canadians actually like don't know you. And it's kind of fine, like the Americans know you better. It, it's very true. It's very, like, actually the first time when um, I went to California, went to Frankenstein's, that was kind of like the first kind of time where people were coming up to me and asking for autographs and taking pictures and stuff like that. It's grown a lot more in Canada, but I remember even after selling the card, I went to um, Texas. I went to Fan Expo in Toronto and nobody recognized me. Nobody like knew or anything like that. And then not even two months later going to um, California, Frank and Sons, it was like a whole completely different world. Awesome. Oh. And without further introduction, uh, as we have talked about, this is Brooke Trafton. And uh, Trafton. And uh, once again, he was the man who pulled the one of one, uh, the one ring card uh, from Magic. And... And we just want to kind of like get to know him better because we, we I find that the media coverage obviously is always get caught up with the card itself, how much it's sold for and, and, and the postable loan buying and everything, but we want to get to know you. So so kind of like what your what is your journey do, with with magic? Like do you play competitively? Are you a collector yourself? Do you play other in, uh, other TCGs? I um, I started magic uh, way back. Like I was probably twelve years old, probably nineteen ninety six. Um, played for, for years until I went to university. I kind of fell back out of it. And about three, four years ago, I got back into Magic, probably like Sandicar Rising era. Okay. And it just, you know, it started just, you know, building little decks, playing with friends. And then I got into going out and actually doing draft tournaments. Um, as for formats, I love draft. Playing random cards and opening packs. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, building a deck out of that. Um, I also play Commander. And so, like, yeah, in those four years, I kind of started getting more and more into it. Um, and then Lord of the Rings came out. And, yeah. So, I, were you a Lord of the Rings fan as well, too? I more into Magic than Lord of the Rings. But okay. Yeah, I remember when I was a kid and then they had all the movies going to theaters. I went to the theaters the first day of the game. Uh, Like, I remember going to see the two towers at least four times in the theater. Oh, uh, nice. It's like every now and then I also have to revisit by watching the extended version as well too. Oh, oh yeah. But uh, it's funny that you, you you brought this pack because one of the few things that, that when I because I'm not a big magic collector, but when I found that when Transformers were inside this, it's like oh I I, I gotta buy some. So that's when you kind of got back into it too. Like I, I've never been a magic collector. Yeah. It's just simply because when they do the different collaborations and different stuff like like a few months ago like the, the, with Follow oh, and all yeah. that. Um, but I, like I was the child of the '80s, you know what I mean? Like, like Optimus Prime is yeah. like my pseudo father. Um, so it's like when Optimus was... is your stepdad. Or? Oh no, he, he's, he, he's, he's the cousin that no one wants to, to hang out with. Okay. Although I, I, I love Hot Rod, but not Optimus Prime. Oh, okay. fair, fair. But um, I, that got me into kind of like looking into magic, and, it, and that was also the set was like, oh, there's serial number artifact cards in this yeah. as well too. So I was like, okay. This is kind of cool, you know? Because for myself, I'm a sports card collector and I do like some Pokemon and One Piece with my son. Yeah. But uh, but that's what got me in, which I, I shared with you earlier. I, I had to look at secret layers like, oh, they have these cool Coral, Optimus Prime, and uh, Megatron. Oh, yeah. it's like, and I have those those are two main like MTG PC cards I have. Yeah. Oh, man. It, it's wild. In, in, you know, same for a lot of people, like... You know, the Lord of the Rings was a big one. For me, right after Lord of the Rings was Doctor Who, and like to me, that was a bit more of an exciting mm, thing. Right, right. Uh, but like you said, Fallout, Fallout's crazy. Like, even, I think Fallout right now is more expensive for the packs than it is to buy Lord of the Rings. Well, ever since, I guess, oh, especially you, after you pulled that card, they kind of, yeah, the chances of going higher <laughs> yeah, that was, too, yeah. was slim. Yeah. Oh, 100%. <laughs> I remember, like, those boxes went up to, like, 800 bucks up. I remember, um, because... During that time, like before you pulled it, we had a show um, uh, on Mississauga as well too, and literally people was like, "Yeah, we're on the hunt for this." And it was it was the hottest product at our yeah. show because everyone's like, "Just like, like, do you do sports as well too?" I I don't do sports. I do have a bit of a collection. My uncle used to own a card store back in like the 90s uh, and then when it closed down he kept all the cards uh, and he, re he passed away about a year ago oh. so as we were cleaning out the house like me and my cousin went through we kept a whole bunch of stuff I have a, 
storage locker with a whole bunch of stuff still in cases. Uh, yeah. So you know how um, so Bedard has a one of one bounty, right? Oh, for, yeah. for, for a million dollars. So it's kind of very <laughs> re that that day at the show was very reminiscent because of all the bounties that were being offered for the one ring, right? Oh, yeah. And we heard so much different numbers, and then we heard, oh, Post Malone was offering this, and then someone else was offering some European guy from Spain or something was yeah. offering more, and there was yeah. like all this back and forth, like wow, this is. Like, because it, it never, like, overall in terms of TCG in general, it never, like, get that kind of attention, no. you know? And, and when it first started, like, when they first announced it, like, the bounties were small. Like, it started off as, like, a thousand bucks, and then yep. it went up to five. And then to, I remember following it and seeing the increase. And, you know, one, by the time it got to a hundred grand, I was like, no, no way. And then it just kept <laughs> going. And, you know, the crazy story about that, um, when I first found it, I actually reached out to Dave and Adams about the bounty. Right. And, you know, at our first meeting, you know, I explained, you know, I'm just, I'm just a retail worker, you know, I'm just a normal person, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. And they're like, well, listen, like, we know there's other bounties out there. <laughs> if you can find something bigger to change your life, by all means, go for it. Yeah. If not, we're still going to be here. And I'm like, that's insane. Like, those guys are amazing. Absolutely amazing. Very supportive. Oh, 100. Very nice. Cool. So, let's talk about it. So, let, walk us through that journey from the the, the moment you woke up because you were saying that you know, you're ready to pre-order some products and yeah. you're like you know let's grab a few more boxes. So, walk us through what happened for, that day. For 100 percent clarity, I was supposed to work that day. <laughs> I may have called it sick. May have. So, I, <laughs> I didn't go to work that day, and I'm like, you know what? Pre-releases today. I have, you know, boxes that I can go pick up. I had just got paid again, and I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll pick up some more. So I decided, uh, out of the two places that I ordered pre-releases, face-to-face was more, um, more of a chance that they would have extra on right, because they were sold out. Yeah, because they're known for magic. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I went there. I got there before it opened. I was the first one in line. There's a lineup of people to get wow. out there. And <laughs> luckily, I went right to the counter. I picked up my pre-order said, you know, do you have any more boxes left? And they had just opened up a case. They had eight boxes left in my box. And, you know, I, I rushed home. I, I wasn't even thinking about pulling the one ring or even, like, any serialized card in it. I was just excited. It was, you know, explore the ring. So right. It's, it was exciting. So, I go home, I open the first box. I didn't get it. <laughs> there was no serialized cards. There was a couple okay cards. You know, I took a break, went back to it. It was in the, I would say, the 19th pack I opened. And so that's like was, two thirds in the way of this, I guess, everything? It was in the second box. Okay. So it wasn't even in, I hadn't even opened the third box. Right, okay. And honestly, it was it was in such a weird spot. So like when you open cards, they're normally the rares at the back. Right. It was the fourth part in. Oh. They replaced a common with that card. So I, you know, I've already been rifling through a bunch of packs. I almost missed it. Like I went through, <laughs> I had to go back. I'm like, that card was different. And sure enough, it's that. It's a, it's a big one-on-one. -on -one. It's gold. It, it, as soon as I saw it, like I knew. You know, it, it just, it, I've collected magic cards. I've seen all kinds of crazy artworks and foil treatment. This, this was a special card. Like they had raised ink. Ink was foil. It was different. Like I can't even describe it. It was beautiful. You're the only one that can't describe it. By Realistically, the way. yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> now it's in plastic, so you get yeah. you know it's hindered a little. Even bit, Post Malone can't describe it. You know, unless he breaks it open. But oh god. <laughs> imagine that. So yeah, as soon as I saw it, you know, I I, I put all the cards down. I ran and grabbed the sleeve, put it in the sleeve, and I'm like, okay. Like, I have to put this away, but I need to take a video of this. So, right. if you've seen the video of me with the shaky hands, that was literally seconds after the So, seconds. you're saying you're shaking, so what was really, like, the initial reaction? Kind of like, like, like was it kind of like, like, oh my god? Or kind of like, it, instantly, like, in my head, I pictured the Dave and Adams website with that I knew, I knew it was a million bucks. At least a million dollars in my hand. And... I had so much adrenaline. I felt like my heart was racing. I, I, I'm like, I'm gonna faint. I'm gonna pass out. I literally went on my balcony for like 10 minutes to cool off. <laughs> cause I was like, if I faint and pass out, cause I'm like home alone, no one's gonna see me. What if I, you know, what if I don't wake <laughs> up? 
at least I'll go on the balcony and someone can call 911. That's I'll right. Have the card. That's so right. Like, it's That's all right. good. So, anyways, I uh, you know I went outside, took a breather, I put the card into um, a sleeve, like a top mm -hmm. loader, and then I found like, I started calling Everything every bank I could find just to find someone to put it in right away. Like my, I called my original bank. They're like, oh yeah, we can have a, a meeting in three days. I'm like, no, I need I need something to put this in right now. Within it was about 40 minutes. I found a bank and put it in the safety deposit box. So from the time I opened it to the time I put it in the safety deposit box, 40 minutes. Wow, it was crazy. Absolutely crazy. So when, 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 at what point did you like it really sunk in and kind of like I, I just pulled the one ring? Like it, it didn't. It didn't at first, and honestly, like. It was so much disbelief. Like even on my way to the bank, I'm trying to call. Like, how do I verify this? You know, how do I how do I know that this is the only one? So I called face to face. And as soon as the answer I said, "Hey, yeah, I pulled the one ring," and he hung up on me. Yeah, he's like, "You're liar." <laughs> he hung liar. up on me. You know, I called him back and said, "Listen, I, I get it. Like, you probably have a lot of phone calls with pranks and stuff, but say I do have it. How do I verify it?" And he sent me like. Um, links to get a, a hold of head office and send them pictures and stuff. At the same time, I was calling Dave and Adams. Um, they were trying to reach back to me, put it in the bank. It was probably like 4 o'clock I was in the bank, and by 6 o'clock I was on the phone with the, like a conference call with Dave and Adams. Uh, like, it was insane. And even then, like it still was surreal. So, at what point did they get out to the media? And, oh. at, like, and then, then everyone was, kind of, was like, probably trying to contact you. So, right so the way it worked out is, after the first day, I got a hold of a lawyer. So it's a kind of like, I'm like, okay, it's something, you know, I, I'm sure David Adams has lawyers. It's smart for me to have a lawyer, go through contracts, see all this kind of stuff. Um, so I got Jessica Greenwood, and she introduced me to Carly Posner, who's with the Notable Group. And she kind of took control over trying to find whoever can like, the sale of it and like keeping me anonymous. Right. So at the same time, like I wasn't even gonna say like at first I didn't want to make myself public. Yeah. And you know through going with Carly, um, you know anytime like someone a news media outlet needed something, you know they went through her and then I gave them the information and then it was it was like a relay. Right. Um, it wasn't until. Uh, we sent it to PSA and then it got graded when they announced that it was found. And then, you know, everyone started, you know, trying to figure it out. So then that's when we announced, okay, like, you know, it was found in truth. If you want any questions, this is the person to contact, and it was through Carly. And even still, like, the, my close friends, like, I only told a couple people, and, like, at work, I was very quiet about it. And... Even some people at work would kind of like put the two two together, <laughs> and like I'd have random people. They're like, "Oh, did you win like a million dollars in a card game?" And I'm like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The best was um, I did one interview, and um, it was like, you know, how old are you? Where do you work? I'm like, oh, retail. Um, I work in retail. I'm a cashier slash forklift driver. I'm 36 years old, and uh, you know that that went out. I think it was. Um, some local news station in Toronto, and then you know, <laughs> my HR pulled me into the office like a week or two later, and they're like, "So what is this about a 36-year-old retail forklift driver?" Blah blah blah. And I had just turned 37, right. so I was like, "I'm 37. I don't know who you're talking about." <laughs> but then a week later, that's when the you know, post loan thing happened, and like everything was posted in the media. So, it was me. So did. Did Post Blown, like, like, did he find out himself or did someone let him know? It's like, it's, it's found now. Like, it was like, so, you know, when I met with Carly and we had a discussion of, like, you know, what do you see, what do you want to happen? And the first thing that came out of my mouth was, like, I want to sell this to Post Blown. Like, that is, that is the goal. Like, I hope he is the one that wants Cause, it. Because I mean, he's kind of been, like, the poster boy for oh, yeah. MGG for the last five years, oh, right? Oh, and, yeah. and it, you know, I see him on uh, game nights, and I heard about yeah. him buying the Black Lotus. And so I'm like, okay, if anyone that's really into magic, that's really popular, that might have the money to buy this, I think Post Mode is the best bet, for sure. Mm. And the amount of, like, love he has for the game. Right. The amount of, like... Um, Supporting gifts for like influencers and stuff like that, so I'm like, that'd be the perfect person. 
so then, you know, in that meeting, they're like, well, realistically, we got to think about your life and your goals and stuff like that. So, so months go by, no word about Post Malone. We had lined up a sale to someone else. And we would spend weeks, you know, finalizing contracts, going back and forth with it. I was supposed to get a final copy on a Friday and then go over it. And it just so happens Post Malone was playing a concert in Toronto. And it was on a Thursday. Oh man, the timing. So, you know, I, I literally had to work that day. I go punch in at like 3 o'clock. Carly calls me five minutes into my show. She's like, what are you doing? I'm like, uh, no work. She's like, you need to leave. You need to do whatever you can. Get out of work. My boy, what's up? She's like, Post Malone's in Toronto. We're going to go meet him. Bring the card. I'm like, no way. So I told my boss, I got to go. I went and picked up the card. I go meet uh, Carly and some other people beforehand. And they're like, okay, like, we are literally going to go in. We're going to take some pictures, meet Post Malone, and then we're going to go. Like, it wasn't about selling the card. It was like, we, we have a chance for you to meet Post Malone. And I'm like, that, that is amazing. I was so excited. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we finally sneak in the well, not sneak in. We finally get into the back. Like, it was kind of weird because security's like, what do you have? And I have this case with right. a card. <laughs> and, you know, they finally figure it out, go in the back, we meet him. And he's looking at the car, he's so excited. And he asks the question, how much are you selling it for? So we told him, like, right now the car bids $2 million. <laughs> and then he goes, what's your commander? Carly looks at me because she doesn't really think that's what that means. Yeah. What's that? Come in. And Carly, I look at him, I'm like, I snuck it in with me if you want to see it. He's like, yeah, for sure. So I hand him, like, man, he's going through it. I say, I'll take it. I'll take it. And I'm like, I'm, I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, the cards? Like, he's like, no, I'll buy the card off of you. And I, like, it was like a, like, outer body experience for like one second, you know what I mean? I was just like, what just happened? He's all pumped. He's like, yeah, let's go, let's go. He's trying to pump me up. It's like, and I couldn't even muscle anything out right. of my like, yeah. <laughs> But uh, like, it was, it was surreal. Absolutely surreal. So what, was it actually a transacted that evening? Wow. So, so, so he was quick. <laughs> so we, 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 we met him. We, we uh, talked to him. Like, we sold the card and stuff. And we hung out for a bit. Like he literally came up and he was like, uh, you know, offering us a toast with beer and stuff. And, I look at Carly, I'm like, I'm having a beer with Post Malone, this is crazy. She's like, you just sold a card for $2 million. What are you, why are you excited about this part? I'm like, this is the craziest thing. So he ends up going on stage to go to the concert. And while, like, I'm excited, I'm like, we get to watch the concert too. But we had to stay backstage and write the contracts. So... We're doing the paperwork and stuff for this, and I'm just like, I can hear it. Let's go, let's go. Let's I'm surprised on. the concert, he, he didn't do the, the Logan Paul, put it around the chain, around his neck, oh, and through the concert. Imagine that. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. But he does, like, I know, like, I've met other people um, since after the sale of the car. He brings it around, like, he shows it off, and, and like, lets other people take pictures with it. I'm, I'm so happy that it ended up with him, because, like, that card has life still. Right. I mean, like, if it was anyone else, like, not even anyone else, let's say it was just a collector, it's probably in a safety deposit box, and we'll stay there right. forever. Right. Whereas for him, like, I know um, there was Talia Voss in uh, Texas. She's an influencer for MTG. And um, I met her in, in Vegas. They had a game, and he needed to make a treasure token. He was like, oh, I got the perfect thing, and he pulls out the one right now. They're like, that's your token? Yeah. So then they, you know, <laughs> they're all taking pictures and stuff, but oh, it's, <laughs> it's insane. And the amount of people I met that are like, oh, I got to see the ring, I got to, I'm like, I, that's exactly what I want. Oh, so I, I assume before you transact, you, you took a, enough pictures as a memento of it. I, yes and no, because like, honestly, like, it was such a weird time because I wanted to keep it secret. Like, I didn't want to keep going, like, if I kept right. going to the same bank, like, someone's going to be like, oh, that's kind of weird. Yeah. Like, yeah. going to see the deposit box. And... For a secret like that, like as much as you want to tell someone and you go up to someone who say like, hey, can you keep a secret? You can't be mad at them for telling a secret because you already told the secret to them. That's true. You know what I mean? That's so true. it's like I had to take it on myself to be as quiet as possible about everything. So like even even me going to that spot, like to, to look at the card and take pictures, I'm like, I had to do it once and that's it. You know? So, so. I have some. Yeah. <laughs> well, or sugar on the gun. Did the CRA take a big chunk? No. 
No, surprisingly, like I, I went through, um, it's a long process, we're not finished yet, but you know, I, I was lucky that you know, with all this um, opportunity that I was able to get you know, proper tax lawyers to help me out go through that, because right? I'm sure if I just went to HR block, it would be a lot different. <laughs> That's true. They probably like, mm, we're not sure what to do with this. Oh yeah. But no, I luckily, like again, Jessica Carly, like they, they've all been so helpful in steering me in the right directions. Like Jessica helped me find um, my financial guy, Mark from RBC, helped me invest it and do other things with it. And then through them, helped me find a tax lawyer and then helped me find another person to do my taxes. So it's just been I, I can't I can't describe how helpful people have been. Like, there's so many spots in this journey where it's like things could have gone wrong or gone crazily and someone's just like, you know what, like I'm gonna help out this person. And, and it's insane. Like, for example, uh, Brad from the PSA is here at the convention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when we sent the card off, I didn't have uh, my passport so I had to hire someone, like a security company, to take it from me to go to California by himself and bring it back. Which to me was like, oh my God, like what, what if anything happened? I had to sign a contract saying like, if anything happens, it's, not my it's too bad. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I remember giving it to him on, it was like a Tuesday, and then the Wednesday he was flying out in the morning, and I got a text saying, you know, someone from the PSA is here. With him. And I'm like, oh, amazing, it ended up being Brad. And even the part with Brad and, and the PSA taking it in, he was telling me they were getting phone calls like 10 or 11 a day. Oh, I have the card, I have the card, I have the card. He uh, was, he told me the story, he was at home with his wife and his children, and he had the video, you know, and he me with the card and I was shaking. And I think it was his daughter's, like, dad, like, that guy, like, really thinks it's the card. Like, you can tell by the way, like, he's really never here. To him, he believes it's true. So, you know, with that, they took the chance, they took it to California, and here we are. We got the line, yeah, authentically. That was, that was the hardest part. I think people that were upset for you was like, why was this not a 10? They should at least give it a 10 for, for a card like this. I, I get it, but I mean, like, you know, when you, when you go down into it and, and see, like, the specs and stuff like that, you can understand it. But honestly, like, a 9, like, it, it's still sold for 10 I know, it I'm makes no difference if it's a 1 of 1, yeah. but I... Like, I it's still... Even with that that grading, when you look at that card, especially raw, that is the most beautiful card you'll ever see. In that. I, I, like, I, I, we, like if I was, I would have trolled like Matt Turner to like, come on, man. Like, yeah. oh, I know, but it, <laughs> it is, you know, like, and again, at that point, I was still anonymous. So like, um, even even when it was coming back, and they laid it at Pearson, Brad from it, like the security guy messaged me. He's like, Brad is still following me around. I think he wants to see and know who you are. And I'm like, still like anonymous at the time. I'm like. Okay, meet me in the washroom. And we literally did it like a movie where we had like, I went into the washroom, <laughs> checked all the stalls, and you know, I was there by myself. I washed my hand for a minute until he showed up. <laughs> and he checked the stall, he's like, okay, quick. And then we did the handoff. I had to take a picture with me holding it. Wow. And then, you know, I ran out. And it was like in the middle of summer. I'm in a sweater, like aviators, a hat. Like it was. Trying to be in It's like an espionage, espionage film. Now. It was crazy, and like at the airport, yeah. and like people are probably like, "What if I get stopped? Like, what? Yeah. what if, like, what is this? Like, it's a car." But yeah, like it's, it's insane. It's so, kind of the I guess I guess after sale now. So kind of like what happened kind of after that was like back to normal life. Of course, a little bit richer. Yeah, but because like. It's been like what, like a year and a half now, right? It's almost a year. It'll oh, it's almost a year? In okay. You're in Japan. So, how has your life it's, changed, or does it really change it, you as a person, and, or just I'm back to buy more packs? You know, like it's, it's it's kind of the same and kind of different. So, okay. so one thing is, you know, with the way that um, I set up uh, my uh, investments and stuff like that, essentially, I'm going to live off the same income work the same way, eventually retire from it, so that I'm not going to go crazy and you know, start buying cars and houses and being, you know, flexing and stuff, because two million is a lot of money, but it can go quick, especially in today's market. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, with that route going, you know, trying to keep it normal in that sense, but at the same time, you know, there's a lot of popularity and a lot of buzz with everything, um, you know, I started doing TikToks, I started doing YouTube, uh, 
TikTok is at brooktrafton.com or at, at brooktrafton. Um, YouTube is the one ring guy. So um, then we got invited. Uh, we did Magicon in Vegas. We got invited to that. While doing that, Cassius Marsh from California, from Cash Cards Unlimited, he invited us out to go hang out with him. So, yeah, life's kind of normal in one sense, but on the other side, I have you know, these people that can uh, do these events and do all these things and can help. Now, I'm, when I open cards, I feel most of it, because <laughs> what if I pull something else crazy, right? So, life's caught, still kind of the same, but also a new venture in another sense, too. It's almost like, Hannah Montana. Like I have like my <laughs> normal life like this, and then sometimes it turns into the mind desire. So there you, you know go. I mean? <laughs> so you're talking about like getting into like um, like streaming and, and, and everything. It, it's kind of like full circle of where you're connecting now, and now you're a content creator, and yeah. now it's going. So, so you want to share with the kind of viewers like kind of what, what you're doing now, so, and how can people check you out and so all that? Right now, I have uh, my TikTok channel. Right now we're doing a series, it's uh, Cereal for Dinner. So the one ring is the only serialized card I've ever found. And I kind of want to change that. So, <laughs> and I figured, you know, it, for me it's more fun to pull and have that chase. Right. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, now that I have the money I can just go buy it. Buy anything like, we want. You yeah. know, it, it's, not, it's not the same feeling, you know. For yeah, me, exactly. I still love opening packs, I still love know that that feeling like you're chasing the card the anticipation you that, you know, yeah, like when yeah, you get your yeah. med megatron and like opening it from that you're like, oh, well, that's wild. Oh, i know you bought it i'll be best from secret layer but <laughs> so you know on the tiktok channel we do a lot of stuff like that um also announcements of different things that come into the, uh, the show here uh the youtube channel the one ring guy i i was going to use my name but i'm like you know people when i see them in the streets you know, recognize me it's not like hey Brooke Trafton because it's a really hard name to memorize. Plus you want to get mugged it's, either. <laughs> it's always like are you the guy? Are you the guy? So I'm like yeah I'm, I'm the one ring guy. So it's kind of fitting for the YouTube channel. But that one we've done a lot of um, like long form conventions. We started with when we went to California then when we went to Las Vegas we did one for uh, Comic Con that was recent. Mm -hmm. Um, with that, we're going to start uh, going into Magic the Arena. Okay. Start doing some live streams with that and filming it, putting it onto YouTube. But yeah, it's just slowly progressing over time. Cool. So, yeah. as a collector right now, what, what are what are you collecting now? Like, or what's the next uh, thing you're trying to find? For me, and I brought a pack too, as you were mentioning. We want to find more serials. Yeah, Brothers War. cards. This again, like we got Transformers in this. Do you want to open one right now? You gotta do the. Like, I I never have the hot hand. You obviously okay. have had the hot okay. hand. All right. Let's, I, I, I was let's get it. to the audience. It's like if 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 he cracks open the Optimus Prime foil, uh, the shattered glass Optimus Prime, I will I will gladly it's yours. pay full comps for it. That's it. That's it. You're looking for the Optimus. I'm looking for a serial, serial number card. artifact. Yeah. I was really hoping to pull one before the convention because they have the same day grading here, and I was like, oh, that would be so cool. Yeah. You know, get a serialized card, get a same day grading, and uh, let's go from there. Now, this one's different. The serialized cards are going to be at the very back. After, well, there's the token card. But this back card has a chance to be serialized. So, here's the commons. There's not too many good cards in the set. It's like the first set that they had serialized cards in it. So, it wasn't... It was like a test kind of thing. Right. And there's not many, like, meta cards for decking in this set, right? No. Not really. There's yeah. some, like, so the ones that they did serialize are the artifacts. There's some that, you know, are staples and that can be used for a lot of stuff. But a lot of it's just reprints. And this set, again, it was good when it first came out, but that was like over a year ago. And they keep making sets like crazy. So it'll be one of these if it's serialized. It'll be yeah, it, there would there'll be the numbering on the yeah. corner, left, bottom, left, right? Exactly. Yeah. So we'll have, I think it's three of these. Yeah, oh, mine's that. That's not bad. Next one's going to be Transformer. Did we get the Shattered Glass one? No. No, nope. regular Ultra, Ultra Magnus. Magnus. Okay, so this last card has a chance to be serialized. Oh, it's not even close. It's a, a, board, uh, it's a, a board, board, borderless, right? It's a, yeah, it's yeah. a borderless one. Now with the, the last card, if it was an artifact, it has a chance. I've opened up a bunch of these. So, so, yeah. so ladies and gentlemen, you can still, you know, with a hot hand, you can still sometimes skunk out. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'd said it happens. That's okay. That's half the fun. You know? 
Oh, it is. They get through all good packs. You win some, you lose some, right? So I, I definitely want to thank you for your time. Oh, I appreciate um, it. It's just like, it's like you said, it, it's about the, the the joy of getting that price because it's like, with, with, with this bounties and stuff, anyone could just, with who has no clue what the game is or whatever, and just buy it and just hopefully get lucky, right? Exactly. But it's, but it's always great to see, like, a, a true fan, a, a person who plays competitively and has always been into Magic. You know, to get that card and also to sell it to someone like Post Malone who was, who was a huge you know into magic big magic fan himself so it's kind of like where the there's that reciprocation of joy you know what I mean because like yeah the money's nice but I'm always feeling too is when the card is going to someone you know that is going to love and respect it and you know that they're definitely going to uh, I, I guess always appreciate it and it's kind of like their, their holy grail of their collection right so I, I'm honestly so glad I went to that like, I feel like that card's gonna live. Yeah, that that that's awesome. Because I see him like share about it like everywhere. Like I was watching random like guys with, with Joe Rogan and he was gonna talk about it and oh, all yeah. that. I, I was still, like, my friend sent me that. And the funny thing is, for when I met him, he's like, "Is there anything that you don't want? Like, you need to say when I, whatever." And I'm like, "Just just don't tell him where I went." And sure enough, on Joe Rogan, he's like, oh, "I don't know how much I could say about it, but he works and he said it." And I'm like. <laughs> one thing. Wow. But on top of that, like he uh, when they were introducing the whole topic, he's just like, oh, his name is Brooke, he's an F and legend. And when I heard that, like I came to tears. I'm like, oh, I'll post uh, you. Like, you're so good. Do, do you still like keep... I haven't talked to him like since then, basically, but there's a lot of other people that like I'm still keep in contact with, like through, through this whole experience. Like Cassius Marsh, like we still met stuff, like I'll check out his live. That's the same. Like it's, it's, it's crazy. Absolutely. Awesome. So, all the best to you for your future ventures and other, like, I look forward to seeing you too. Like, once again, for, for me not being, like, a like magic player of my fan, but just, like, your, the whole story, but now getting to know you more on a personal level about just, you know, it, as, as a TCG guy myself, it's, once again, it's, it's, it's about the, the love of the hobby, the, the love of the cards, and how, like, there are, like, kids are getting into it, and, like, because you know how sports guys, they, they've priced themselves out of having like, you know, kids getting involved anymore. And, and TCG is where it's at in terms of going back to the, what's it, the, the love of the cards, the, the joy of the feeling of, of opening that pack. So we thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. All right. So, so remember, follow Brooke on all the socials, especially uh, with this, uh, the new stream that's, that's going to happen. That's it. All right. That's Take care. It. Have a good night. We'll be back uh, tomorrow with uh, Eli's going to be back with more interviews with you tomorrow. Have a good night. Awesome.